The Fir Tree by Tove Jansson. One of the Hemulans was standing on the roof, scratching at the snow. He had yellow woolen mittens that after a while became wet and disagreeable. He laid them on the chimney top, sighed and scratched away again. At last he found the hatch in the roof. That's it, the Hemulan said. And down there they're lying fast asleep, sleeping and sleeping and sleeping, while other people work themselves silly just because Christmas is coming. He was standing on the hatch, as he couldn't remember whether it opened inwards or outwards. He stamped on it cautiously. It opened inwards at once and the Hemulan went tumbling down among the snow and darkness and all the things the Moomin family had stowed away in the attic for later use. The Hemulan was now very annoyed and furthermore not quite sure where he had left his yellow mittens. They were his favourite pair. So he stumped down the stairs, threw the door open with a bang and shouted in a cross voice, Christmas is coming. I'm tired of you and your sleeping. And now Christmas will be here almost any day. The Moomin family was hibernating in the drawing room as they were wont to do. They had been sleeping for a few months already and were going to keep it up until spring. A sweet sleep had rocked them through what felt like a single long summer afternoon. Now all at once, a cold draught disturbed Moomin Troll's ear, dreams. And someone was pulling at his quilt and shouting that he was tired and Christmas was coming. Is it, is it spring already? Moomin Troll mumbled. Spring? The Hemulan said nervously. I'm talking about Christmas, don't you know? Christmas? And I've made absolutely no arrangements yet myself, and here they send me off to dig you out. I believe I've lost my mittens. Everybody's running about like mad and nothing's ready. The Hemulan clumped upstairs again and went through the hatch. Mama, wake up, Moomin Troll said anxiously. Something awful is happening. It's called Christmas. What do you mean? His mother said and thrust her snout out from under her quilt. I don't really know, her son replied. But nothing seems to be ready and something's got lost and everyone is running about like mad. Perhaps there's a flood again. He cautiously shook the snork maiden by the shoulder and whispered, Don't be afraid, but something terrible's happening. Ugh, Moomin Papa said. Easy now. He rose and wound the clock that had stopped somewhere in October. Then they followed the Hemulan's wet trail upstairs and climbed out on the roof of the Moomin house. The sky was blue as usual, so this time it couldn't be the volcano. But all the valley was filled with wet cotton, the mountains and the trees and the river and the roof. And the weather was cold, much colder than in April. Is this white stuff Christmas? Moomin Papa asked wonderingly. He scooped up some of the cotton in his paw and peered at it. I wonder if it's grown out of the ground, he said, or fallen down from the sky. If it came all at once, that must have been most unpleasant. But Papa, it's snow, Moomin Troll said. I know it is. It doesn't fall all at the same time. No, Moomin Papa said. Unpleasant all the same. The Hemulan's aunt passed by the house with a fir tree on her chair sledge. So you're awake at last, she observed casually. Better get yourself a fur before dark. But why, Moomin Papa began to say. 
I haven't time to explain now, the Hemulans aunt called back over her shoulder and quickly disappeared. Before dark, she said, the snork maiden whispered. The danger comes by dark then. And you need a fir tree for protection, Moomin Papa mused. I don't understand it. Nor I, Moomin Mama said submissively. Put some woolen socks and scarves on when you go for the fur. I'll make a good fire in the stove. Even if disaster was coming, Moomin Papa decided not to cut down one of his own furs because he was particular about them. Instead, he and Moomin Troll climbed over Gaffsy's fence and chose a big fur that she wouldn't have any use for. Is the idea to hide oneself in it? Moomin Troll wondered. I don't know, Moomin Papa said and swung his axe. I don't understand a thing. They were almost by the river on their way back when Gaffsy came running towards them with a lot of parcels and paper bags in her arms. She was red in the face and highly excited, so thankfully she didn't recognise her fir tree. Stuff and bother, Gaffsy cried. Badly brought up hedgehogs should never be allowed to, and I told Misabel, oh, it's a shame. The fur, Moomin Papa said, desperately clinging to Gaffsy's fur collar. What does one do with one's fur? Fur? Gaffsy repeated, confused. Fur? Oh, it's such a nuisance. It's a horrid thing. I haven't dressed mine yet. Now how on earth I can find the time? She dropped several parcels in the snow and her cap slipped askew and she was near to tears from nervous exhaustion. Mummy Papa shook his head and took hold of the fur again. At home, Mummy Mama had dug out the veranda with a shovel and laid out life belts, aspirin, Moomin Papa's old gun and some warm compresses. One had to be prepared. A small woody was sitting on the outermost edge of the sofa with a cup of tea in its paw. It had been sitting in the snow below the veranda, looking so miserable that Mama had invited it in. Well, here's the fur, Moomin Papa said. If we only knew how to use it. Gaffsy said it had to be dressed. I haven't anything large enough, Moomin Mama said worriedly. Whatever did she mean? What a beautiful fur, the small Woody cried and swallowed some tea in the wrong way from pure shyness, regretting already that it had dared to speak. Do you know how to dress a fir tree? The snork maiden asked. The woody reddened violently and whispered, in beautiful things, as beautifully as you can. So I've heard. Then overwhelmed by its shyness, it clamped its paws to its face, upset the teacup and disappeared through the veranda door. Now keep quiet a moment, please, and let me think, Moomin Papa said. If the fir tree is to be dressed as beautifully as possible, then it can't be in order to hide it. It must be to placate the danger in some way. I'm beginning to understand. They carried the fir out into the garden and planted it firmly in the snow. Then they started to decorate it all over with the most beautiful things they could think of. They adorned it with big shells from the summertime flower beds and with a snork maiden's shell necklace. They took the prisms from the drawing room chandelier and hung them from the branches. And at the very top, they pinned a red silk rose that Moomin Papa had once upon a time given Moomin Mama as a present. Everyone brought the most beautiful thing they had to placate the incomprehensible powers of winter. When the fir tree was dressed, the Hemulin's aunt passed again with her chair sledge. She was steering in the other way now, 
and her hurry was still great. Look at our fir tree, Moomin Troll called to her. Dear me, said the Hemulin's aunt. But then you've always been a bit unlike other people. Now I must, um, I haven't the least bit of food ready for Christmas yet. Food for Christmas, Moomin Troll repeated. Does he eat? The aunt never listened to him. You don't get away with less than a dinner at the very least, she said nervously and went whizzing down the slope. Moomin Mama worked all afternoon. A little before dark, she had the food cooked for Christmas and served it in small bowls around the fir tree. There was juice and yogurt and blueberry pie and eggnog and other things the Moomin family liked. Do you think Christmas is very hungry? Moomin, Moomin Mama wondered a little anxiously. No worse than I, very likely, Moomin Papa said longingly. He was sitting in the snow with his quilt around his ears, feeling a cold coming on. But small creatures always have to be very, very polite to the great powers of nature. Down in the valley, everyone's windows were lighting up. Candles were lit under the trees and in every nest among the branches. And flickering candle flames went hurrying through the snow drifts. Moomin Troll gave his father a questioning look. Yes, Moomin Papa said and nodded. It's best we prepare for all eventualities. So Moomin Troll went into the house and collected all the candles he could find. He planted them in the snow around the fir tree and cautiously lit them, one after the other, until they formed a little circle of flames to placate the darkness and Christmas. After a while, everything seemed to quieten down in the valley. Probably everyone had gone home to wait what was coming. One single lonely shadow was wandering among the trees. It was the Hemulin. Hello, Moomin Troll said softly. Is he coming? Don't disturb me, the Hemulin said sullenly, looking through a long list in which nearly every line seemed to be crossed out. He sat down by one of the candles and started to count on his fingers. Mother, father, Gaffsy, he mumbled. The cousins, the eldest hedgehog. I can leave out the small ones. And Sniff gave me nothing last year. Then Miserable and Wampa and Auntie, of course. Oh, this drives me mad. What is it? The Snork Maiden said anxiously. Has anything happened to them? Presents, the Hemulin exclaimed. More and more presents every time Christmas comes around. He scribbled a shaky cross on his list and ambled off. Wait, Moomin Troll shouted. Please explain. And your mittens. But the Hemulin disappeared in the dark like all the others. Everyone seemed to be in a terrible hurry and worrying about the coming of Christmas. So the Moomin family quickly went in to look for some presents. Moomin Papa chose his best trolling spoon, which had a very beautiful box. He wrote, For Christmas, on the box, and laid it out in the snow. Snork Maiden took off her ankle ring and sighed a little as she rolled it up in silk paper. Moomin Mama opened her secret drawer and took out her book of paintings, the one and only coloured book in all the valley. Moomin Troll's present was so generous and private that he showed it to no one. Not even later, in the spring, did he tell anyone what he had given away. Then they all sat down in the snow again and waited for the frightening guest. Time passed. 
and nothing happened. Only the small Woody, who had upset the cup of tea, appeared from behind the woodshed. It had brought all its relations and the friends of these relations, and each of them was just as small and grey and miserable and frozen. Happy Christmas, the Woody shyly whispered. You're the first to suggest Christmas is happy, Moo Moo Papa said. Aren't you all afraid of what's going to happen when it comes? But this is it, the Woody mumbled and sat down in the snow with its relations. May we look? You've got such a wonderful fir tree. And all the food, one of the relations said dreamily. And real presents, said another. I've dreamt all my life of seeing this up close, the Woody said with a sigh. There was a pause. The candles burnt steadily in the quiet night. The Woody and its relations sat quite still. One could feel their admiration and longing, stronger and stronger. And finally, Moomin Mama edged a little closer to Moomin Papa and whispered, Don't you think so too? Why, yes, but if... Uh, Moomin Papa objected. No matter, Moomin Troll said. If Christmas gets angry, we can close the doors and perhaps we'll be safe inside. Then he turned to the Woody and said, You can have it all. The Woody didn't believe its ears at first. It stepped cautiously closer to the fir tree and with its, with its whiskers trembling. Then all of its friends and relations followed. They had never had a Christmas of their own before. I think we're better off now, Moomin Papa said anxiously. They padded back to the veranda, locked the door and hid under the table. Nothing happened. After a while, they looked anxiously out of the window. All the small creatures were sitting around the fir tree, eating and drinking and opening parcels and having more fun than ever. Finally, they climbed the fir tree and carefully fastened the burning candles on the branches. Only there ought to be a star at the top, the woody uncle said. Do you think so? The woody replied, looking thoughtfully at Moomy Mama's red silk rose. What difference does it make as long as the idea is right? The rose should have been a star, Moomy Mama whispered to the others. But how on earth? They looked at the sky, black and distant, but unbelievably full of stars, a thousand times more than in summer. And the biggest one was hanging exactly above the top of their fir tree. I'm sleepy, Moomin Mama said. I'm really too tired to wonder about the meaning of all of this. But it seems to have come off all right. At least I'm not afraid of Christmas anymore, Moomin Troll said. I believe the Hemulin and his aunt and Gafsy must have misunderstood the whole thing. They laid the Hemulin's yellow mittens on the veranda rail, where he'd be sure to catch sight of them. And then they went back into the drawing room to sleep some more, waiting for spring. <laughs>